Welcome back, guys, for more interesting updates coming out from our team. And I'm going to start with the one that concerns the Nigerian Flamingos. They played their return game today against Liberia in the Abuja National Stadium. And thank goodness we won that game two goals to zero, capping off a very uh, brilliant performance uh, to make it an aggregate of a total 6 1 uh, victory over Liberia. If you recall, you know, we obviously talked about their game uh, last week. Last week, Sunday, they played the first game against Liberia, whereby they traveled to, uh, you know, to Liberia to play that one. They actually beat Liberia four goals to one uh, for that one. We talked about it. And today uh, was the return leg for that match. And the Super Falcons, yet again, uh, putting smiles in our faces by defeating Liberia two goals to one. And what this means is that they've now qualified uh, for the uh, FIFA World Cup Under-17 category, which is going to be played later this year on uh, you know around october uh 2024 uh, it's going to be hosted by the dominican republic that's where it's going to be played so congratulations to this team and again uh you know we have someone a very uh, very prolific young striker in this team goes by the name chi de harmon she actually scored a brace you know she actually scored both of the goals for this encounter and in total she has had to score an impressive 13 goals throughout this FIFA World Cup Under-17 Women's uh, qualifying campaign. She is easily, you know, the star man or star woman for this team because she has really contributed lots of goals. And she's only just a teenager for that matter, which goes to show that she has a future, you know, in the Nigerian uh, Super Falcons, the senior team. And uh, she was obviously she was uh, scouted from the uh, Emo Queens, uh, you know, which which was where she was drafted to play in the national team under 17 level. Congratulations to her. We uh, hope that she keeps on firing and become uh, the next assistant or Shawala for the uh, senior team. And moving forward, guys, the crisis at the helm of the national team is still uh, looming and and you know causing lots of reaction still pouring. And uh, of course, you do know that NFF, after the meeting with uh, the senator and Finidi himself, who also attended, they resolved on looking for a more experienced coach to uh, serve as the technical head of the team, which you know more or less means that Finidi is not going to have uh, the whole power as the head coach. But uh, aside from that one, there's there, there've also been a number of uh, you know support coming in for Coach Finidi. The last time I talked about the fact that Yakubu Aigbeni and uh, uh, Taiwa Wuni obviously uh, raked in support for Finidi, you know, arguing that he needs to be given time. This time, there have been a number of uh, support also coming in for him. And this time around, it, it, he's coming from his former teammate, uh, Friday Ekbo, who was part of the, part of the uh, Super Eagles national team in uh, 1989 between 1989 to 1993 and uh, this man uh, has now said that the you know the nigerian spy goes the nff and the sports minister and everyone involved that they are not treating finity right that they are in fact you know disgracing finity that if it was a foreign coach that was hired and had to lose two matches that this same treatment would not be given to him that would you know, why we are, why Finney is being done like this is because he is Nigerian and he's, you know, he, he's taken for granted, he's uh, maltreated or, or mistreated. And Friday is saying that, you know, the, obviously that then need to, the NFL needs to give Finney a chance because even if then sir came or fire him and bring in a foreign coach, that what's the guarantee that this foreign coach is going to get results immediately what's the guarantee that is going to hit the ground running and start winning two three four five matches on a streak immediately so he's saying that these things are you know are, are, are things that take time that finity can still perform if he's given the support and if he's backed you know by nff sports minister and all stakeholders that uh, that are very powerful and, and regulates Nigerian football. So he's basically calling in for support for his former teammate and he believes that Finidi has what it takes to turn things around for the Nigerian Spigos, but that the team needs to be
patients with him. And uh, adding to that, uh, Coach General Raw, uh, former Nigerian Spikes head coach, also uh, supported what Friday Echo said. Uh, Raw uh, mentioned that, uh, you know, Finiti could, uh, could be doing his best, that these kinds of things can happen. Sometimes it's, it's, it's not within uh, the power of the coach to make things happen, to get results. Sometimes the coach could actually do everything that he can and still not get the results. This is what Roy is saying. Uh, he actually, you know, gave reference to uh, the match that we played against Benin Republic, where we lost that game. He said that the Benin Republic is a very wonderful team. That they are young. That they almost remind him of Nigeria's Bible team in tw in in twenty twenty. Sorry, in twenty eighteen. Uh, you know, in the World Cup qualifiers, which of course he was the head of the team at that time. And, you know, he talks about the fact that his team, the, the Benin Republic, that they are a strong side, that people should not be looking at the fact that it's Benin Republic and that Nigeria should beat them. He's now saying that his team is a strong team. He knows his boys and that uh, the fact that they got a result out of Nigeria, it doesn't make Finidi a bad coach, you know, because his boys are also good. We just don't know them. They are not popular. So that's why people are surprised. That's why... Uh, you know, uh, NFF feel that they could have done more. He's mentioned specifically the guy that played the two, that is the right back for uh, the Benin Republic side uh, by the name Momuli. Raw praises this guy very much. He's just 19 years old, but Raw says that this guy is someone who's very talented and he knows how to mark, uh, you know, mark out his opponent. And we saw that play out uh, against Lukman. Lukman wasn't able to have a complete dribble against this guy one on one. So Ross says that these kinds of things happen, that uh, Nigerian Super League obviously underrated their opponent, that's the Benin Republic. But again, he is still canvassing for support uh, for Coach Finidi and that he needs time to obviously make things work for Nigerian Super League. And moving on into uh, some transfer updates. Adebayo is now a subject of transfer interest from Fenerbahce. And the report is that Jose Mario, who's uh, been recently employed by the club, wants to bring uh, the Nigerian eligible striker to the Fenerbahce side to bolster the attacking option. Of course, uh, we have a, a man, Brighton Saitama, who's going to be playing his football under Jose Mourinho next season. And Mourinho seems to be a huge admirer of Adebayo and wants to bring him to the club. But we'll see what happens in the next days. Olise is also someone who's uh, have some really intense transfer uh, news on his side. And Chelsea... Uh, already, uh, you know, the club that have shown the biggest interest in bringing Olise back to the club. Uh, the young man obviously played at Chelsea when he was 14, you know, for Chelsea Academy. And Chelsea seems very serious to bring him back to the club. And they are reportedly ready to uh, trigger his 60 million release clause. Of course, Olise is someone that is being courted by a lot of clubs. The likes of Newcastle are also approaching the young man. And then, uh, of course, mind you as well, and a, a list of other Premier League clubs. But we'll see what happens in the next coming days. Of course, don't forget that this man turned down uh, the opportunity to move to Chelsea last season and then signed a new four years deal uh, for the club. That's the Crystal Palace. But anything is possible. Chelsea are still going really hot on him. And then list of other clubs, uh, like I said, Newcastle, they will want to sell Almiron and then raise money to go fully into the race to sign Odisse. So that's the update, guys. Thanks for watching this one. Don't forget to like and share the video. React to any of the stories that you like. And uh, take care of yourselves. More updates on Raveling tomorrow. God bless you and good night.